Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salam wa salat ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Imam Shafi'i rahimullah has a very beautiful quote. And for every Muslim, it's, it's in order. One after the other, Imam Shafi'i rahimullah, he keeps saying that a Muslim has this, and he needs to have this, and this, and this. And listen to this beautiful quote. Imam Shafi'i rahimullah says that all humans, insan, is dead. All humans are dead except those who have knowledge, who have ilm. And all of those who have knowledge are asleep except for those who do good deeds. And all of those who do good deeds, what are they? They are deceived. Those who do good deeds, they are deceived except those who have sincerity, ikhlas. And those who have sincerity are always in a state of worry. So it doesn't stop when I gain knowledge. You know, you see this from many people who start seeking knowledge. There was a brother who went to Medina University and he told us that during his tour, he was being toured by a senior at the university. And they went to the cafeteria. So the brother said, the senior who was a, who was a talib al-ilm over there, he said that you will notice over here, you can tell who, is the upper, who are the upper classmen and who are the lower classmen of the, all the students of knowledge. He said, look at those people who are just eating silently. You know, they pack up their lunch boxes, but they have some books with them. They don't say anything. They eat, they pack up, and they leave. And he said, you will see the freshmen, the new people. He said, look at that table over there. And there was a group of people who were arguing. This imam said this, that imam said this. And no, you're wrong, I'm right. This imam is mistaken. And so they're always arguing. You know, when some people start gaining knowledge, they're in a state of deception. So this is not the purpose of knowledge, to argue with each other. To think that now I know what the fiqhi ruling is, when I stand, this is where I tie my hands. And I have the proof, and these brothers are wrong. And these sisters are wrong. This is not the point of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that those truly fear Allah. Who? Those ulama. The ones who have knowledge. Allah uses the word ulama in the Quran. The ones who have knowledge truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how can we know someone? How can we know the attributes, the names, the characteristics of Allah Azza wa Jal and not fear Him and not love Him? How is that possible? It is not. But it is possible to not fear Him if you do not know Him. So where does this word know come from? K-N-O-W? From knowledge. Because if we do not have knowledge of Allah, how can we claim to fear Him? How can we claim that we fear Allah, we love Allah, we have hope in the mercy of Allah if we don't even know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many celebrities up and rising. We see Muslim sisters. SubhanAllah, brother told me that once he saw a video clip of a Justin Bieber concert, somebody shows it to him, and he said there were like hijabis in the crowd. Sisters, our sisters in Islam. Wearing the, the headscarf. Not hijab, the headscarf in the crowd, cheering and going crazy. Even Justin Bieber is singing in the crowd. SubhanAllah, some stories come that, so, that you know, some people were, uh, some nasheed artists were performing and hijabs were being thrown onto the stage. SubhanAllah. Why? Because these people have this tr like love for these celebrities. Why? Because they research about these celebrities. They know about these celebrities. They know what they like to eat. Wallahi, I have seen this. Amongst my own family members, 
amongst my own relatives, people find out what such and such so-and-so celebrity likes to eat, and they will start eating that. How they eat, and they will start following those celebrities and exactly what they do. Why? Because they start to develop love for these celebrities. And how does love develop? When they have knowledge of these celebrities. Whether these celebrities are from Japan, the UK, France, Canada, America, it doesn't matter. They will somehow find, find out. They will gain knowledge about this celebrity. So my brothers and sisters, a simple question. Does it not make sense to research about Allah? Does it not make sense to know about your creator who you will stand in front of on the day of judgment? Justin Bieber will not judge you. I don't know what the new groups are, but back in the day, the Backstreet Boys were big. They won't sit in a panel in front of you on the day of judgment and judge you. Oh, should you go to heaven? Hey, should you go to heaven? Yeah, yeah, he should go to heaven. Oh, throw this guy in hell. No, they will be standing in front of Allah. And so will you. And we will all be naked standing in front of Allah with only our book of deeds. So Imam Shafi says that all humans are dead except those who have knowledge. And then he continues. And he says those who have knowledge are asleep except for those who do good deeds. You will notice in the Quran Allah SWT always says Alladheena walladheena amanu He never stops there. And he says وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and do good deeds. It's not just about belief. Alif la mim ahasiba nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Allah SWT says in Surah Al Kabut, this insan, this instinct that they will be left alone by saying amanna, I believe, wa hum la yuftanun, and they will not be tested, they will not be tried. No, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that He has, He will test you just like He tested those before you. And we all go through tests in this life. And part of this test is that we do good deeds. How can we say that I love Allah if we're not willing to spend 2% of our day worshipping Allah five times a day? How can we say that we love Allah if we're not going to spend 2.5% of our savings in the zakah? How can we say that we love Allah you know, it's easy on the tongue, but it will not be easy when we are in the graves. How can we say that we love Allah if such Muslims are not willing to fast for just 4% of the year? If we calculate 30 days out of 360, that's about 8%. But we do not fast 30 days continuously. So we divide that by approximately 2. That's nearly 4% of the year Allah says fast. Wallahi, I was talking to a brother on the phone while coming here. While driving over here tonight, just about an hour ago. And I said, Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing? Long time. And I said, how is the Ramadan going? And he said, oh, I'm not fasting. Too long. Subhanallah. And then if I ask such people, if you ask such people, do you love Allah? Subhanallah, he has given you eyes, he has given you money, he has given you mothers, fathers, family, food, air, blood. Yes, of course I love him but I'm not willing to spend 4% of my year to fast for his sake, but I love him. What kind of love is this? And then Imam Shafi rahimullah continues and he says, those who have knowledge are asleep except those who do good deeds, and those who do good deeds are deceived except for those who are sincere. Like the Prophet Sallallahu said, it is shirk al-asghar. The term shirk has been used and the Sahaba asked, what is this? And they, he, he said, it is riya, showing off. Doing good deeds so that people will praise you. You know, you guys probably heard this joke. There was a man who was praying long and hard in the masjid. And he goes into rukur so beautifully, so smoothly. Allahu Akbar. Does not whip his hands like the Prophet ﷺ forbade. You know, whipping your hands. No, Allahu Akbar. And he went into rukur. And he's just in the ruku in a prostr in a bowing down position for a really long time, praising Allah. And so some people are walking from behind and they say, SubhanAllah, look at that brother. MashaAllah, look at that brother. And he overhears them. And they say, Look at him. 
What a abid, what a worshiper of Allah. MashaAllah, look at him. And so his intention changes. Shaitan comes to him. And the brother, while in Rukur, he turns around and he says, Oh, and I'm also fasting. Just so that he can get some praises from the people. SubhanAllah. And they, I don't know if this is an authentic story, it's just a joke that goes around. But even if it's true or false, it's something that should really shake us. Because we do everything for the sake of Allah. Every step we take, every deed that we do, we do it for the sake of Allah. We live and we die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not in this world to show off to people. Because like I said, on the day of judgment, when we will all be standing, there will not be a panel of judges. There will not be a panel of relatives or the people from your university, the people from your MSA, the people from your masjid. Oh, was this brother good in the dunya? Yeah, once I saw that he was praying, so let him go into Jannah. There will not be a panel of judges. There will only be one judge, Allah Azza wa Jal. And on that day, we pray that he has mercy upon us. The Prophet ﷺ, going back to the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that I fear for you shirk al-azghar. And they asked him, what is this? And he said, it is riya, it is showing off. And the ulama explained why this is shirk. Because when we do an act of worship, when we worship Allah, when we do any good deed, you drop two dollars in the donation box, that is an act of ibadah. When you are prostrating to Allah, you are putting your forehead, which Allah has blessed you with, this blessed face, we put it on the, for, on the floor for the sake of Allah, it is an act of ibadah. And so when you're in a state of ibadah, and if you change your intention, and you say, and you think that I am prostrating so that the people will praise me, then you are in that state of worship for the, for the sake of the people, not for the sake of Allah. Whatever you are doing. And I will finish with this. Why Imam Shafi rahimullah said that all of those who are sincere are always in a state of worry. Why? Because uh, it slips my mind. I do not remember if it was Imam Shafi rahimullah or Imam al-Nawawi rahimullah. But one of the two, they had a very beautiful quote. And I will finish with this inshallah. And he said that the true mu'min, the true believer, is always battling his or her intention 40 times a day. And of course the number 40 is symbolic, which means many times a day. And he said that because again and again and again, the shaitan, the shayateen will come to you and whisper to you. When you are in worship, you say Allahu Akbar, immediately shaitan will come to you, and he will say, look, sister is passing by. Make sure you perfect your, your posture. Make sure you go into sujood for a little longer. Look, your mother is over there. Make sure you pray so that she praises you. And so this imam said that continuously the mu'min catches that. And they know, they know that their intention is changing. But this is part of our nature. This is part of our nature. But the true mu'min realizes that and they continuously battle that intention. 40 times a day. Every time their intention becomes corrupted, they battle it again. They seek refuge in Allah against shaitan la'anatullah alayh. And they say, Ya Allah, I seek refuge in you. I'm doing this only and only for your sake. Whether it is donating, whether it is even smiling in the face of your brother, whether, whether it is reciting Quran, whether it is me standing here doing this speech, may Allah accept it. And so we are always battling that intention. And then he said, but the fajr, the evil person, the sinner, his or her intention is the same for 40 years. They never care about changing their intention. They are always worried about pleasing the people. And of course, the number 40 years is symbolic. It means for a long time, even until maybe they are dead, they continuously care about pleasing the people. So let us all always check our intentions before Ramadan ends, after Ramadan ends, until we die, until we are buried six feet under. Let us always check our intentions. Always please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with everything that we do. In everything that we do, our whole lives should be dedicated for the sake of Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts from nifaq. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us His rahmah, especially in this month and until we die and in the grave and on the day of judgment. Ameen, thumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the hellfire, accept all of our deeds, accept all of our fasts, and bless us all fi dunya wa fi akhirah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وهو الغفور الرحيم